Welcome to Action Slicing Plugin Spotlight. Action Slicing is a plugin for Unreal Engine 5 that simplifies the process of making sliceable actors. The plugin was developed using C++, but no programming knowledge is required from the user. It supports both static and skeletal meshes, and it also works on skeletal meshes during an animation at runtime, without any previous preparation of the skeletal mesh. The plugin also includes a sample animation. If you want to use a straightforward mechanic of slicing a mesh along a plane in your upcoming project, this plugin might be for you. Main functionality of the plugin is included in the BP Action Slicing Manager blueprint. If you want to use Action Slicing in your level, just drag it anywhere into the viewport since the actor is not visible in game. On the created actor instance, you have access to several parameters. More on that later. Once you have an Action Slicing Manager inside your level, to use the most basic slicing functionality, first you must choose an actor that has a static or skeletal mesh component and tag it with the word sliceable. Keep in mind that static meshes must have a low CPU access checkbox set to true, or else the slicing will not work in packaged builds. Now all you have to do to test the slicing is to set the default pawn class in the game mode inside the level to BP FP Melee Mannequin. If all you have learned so far is enough to enrich your project, then you can open the BP FP Melee Mannequin blueprint and take a look at the slash overlapping actors function. There you can see that it uses the slice actor function, which is available inside any blueprint. You can use it in similar fashion in one of your blueprints in order to trigger the slice. You can also look at the slice actor light params and slice actor full params functions if you want to use less or more parameters respectively. First, you can change a default cap material. This is the material that will be applied to surfaces that have been created on the pieces of the sliced mesh as a result of the slice. Keep in mind that this is only the default material. You will also be able to customize it on an instance basis, which I will explain later. Next parameter is the target quality of a sliced skeletal mesh. Simply put, the higher the number, the better the quality of the resulting skeletal slices, but lower the performance. As the optimization of slicing skeletal meshes utilizes swapping LODs, for this setting to work properly, the sliceable skeletal mesh has to have an LOD with lower amount of vertices than specified on the manager. If this is not the case, then the optimization will just choose an LOD with the least vertices. Next up is a checkbox called Should Scan Tagged Actors. If you do not wish to use the tagging system in your level, then you can set it to false to increase performance. Also on the Action Slicing Manager, there are parameters for tweaking the sample animation which can be played on sliced meshes. Transparency effect time length can be used to adjust the length of the animation. Currently the value is directly tied to the transparency effect curve, so I suggest leaving the value at 3.5 unless you also want to modify the curve at the same time. Speaking of the transparency effect curve, 
this parameter represents the dependency of mesh opacity over time. You can modify it in any way you wish, but remember to also set the transparency effect time length to the length of the curve. You can also specify the transparency material. This is the material that has an exposed parameter responsible for its opacity. This material will be applied to the sliced pieces after the slice. Lastly, you can simply switch the effect on and off for static or skeletal meshes using the checkboxes Play for Static Mesh and Play for Skeletal Mesh. If you are after some advanced customization, you can also directly edit the BP Action Slicing Manager blueprint. There, you can additionally change the default tag used for marking sliceable actors and the default tag that is applied to a procedural mesh component whenever it is created at runtime on non-custom sliceable actors. Besides, you can also edit a static mesh reference that is used as an example of a well-configured static mesh asset. There is also a parameter called transparency param name. This name corresponds to the one responsible for opacity on the transparency material. Additionally, as the whole pulsating transparency effect is done from the blueprint, you are able to analyze the functionality yourself by looking at functions from transparency VFX category. In terms of events, there is one called onslice actor, which happens every time an actor gets sliced. It has many useful parameters attached within a struct. You can use the event however you want to execute your desired functionality. In order to have the most instance-based customization, it is recommended to use the following blueprints based on C++ classes. BP Sliceable Cube and BP Sliceable Character. Sliceable Cube is a template blueprint for a sliceable static mesh. On the blueprint you can modify some parameters. They are exposed to instances, meaning that you can also change the values on an actor in a level. Cap material parameter is an alternative material that will be used for the sliced surface of the mesh. It overrides whatever was specified in the action slicing manager. Transparent material override, just like the cap material, overrides the transparent material specified in the manager, which provides more customization. You can modify the blueprint in any way you want, including changing the static mesh inside the static mesh component. Just remember that static meshes meant to be used within the system must allow CPU access. Besides this, on the blueprint there is also an event called onSliceActor, which will fire whenever this actor gets sliced. Just like the event inside the manager, it has many parameters within the breakable struct called params. Sliceable character is the template for any skeletal meshes meant to be used with action slicing. There you can see cap material and transparent material override parameters, which work in the exact same way as in the sliceable cube template. Besides those, there is also one parameter called slice skeletal mesh quality, which, just like the materials, overrides the value specified in the manager. In the same way as in the sliceable cube, you can modify the skeletal mesh component however you wish. On top of that, there is the onslice actor event. Action slicing plugin also provides the user with two blueprints that showcase a sample mechanism that can trigger the slice: BP FP melee mannequin and BP slicing projectile. The melee mannequin is just a simple first-person character with a placeholder two-handed weapon. As was already stated in the beginning, you can just simply use it by setting it as a default pawn class in your game mode. The slicing functionality is defined in the slash overlapping actors function and the function itself is used within the ABP FP melee animation blueprint, 
and is called from Anim Notifies Time to Attack animations. The slicing projectile, on the other hand, is a sample projectile that slices any object that it hits. It has some parameters exposed for testing purposes. If you want to test it within a first-person project, keep in mind that it is not based on your project-specific projectile, but just on an actor class. Therefore, just replacing the projectile on your default character blueprint will not be possible without some changes to the character blueprint itself. If you are using C++ in your game, feel free to check out the code and modify it according to your needs. Thanks for watching the Action Slicing Plugin Spotlight. I hope that it helped you decide if the plugin is for you and the explanations for the mechanics were clear. If you are already using the plugin, please remember that you can leave a rating and a review in Unreal Marketplace.